Today on Nation, let's talk about your name. What does it mean? Why would you want to change your name? Why pick a name in the first place? Even if you're established and you have a name and had it forever, still may be some good insight. So stick around for WCR Nation. What's going on everybody? Jersey here from WCRWindowCleaner.com, of course, and you are here. What's up? Uh, man, I really just appreciate you guys. Like, I can't say enough about all the comments and you guys ordering through me and the, like, influx that you guys do. So, super duper high five to anybody who uh, orders through me. If it's your first time here, a little bit about it. I'm a sales rep with windowcleaner.com, of course. Love to be your rep, but we'll get to that in a second. Have a look around. We've done over 100 episodes. Every one 30 minutes or more, it's a weekly episode comes out on Friday. SoundCloud, Google Play, all those fun places, so check it out. And YouTube. YouTube's where the conversation is. YouTube is awesome. To comment, tell me what you think. Just do a Ryan Fuster and give me a thumbs up. That's all you have to do, man. Uh, no, I really do appreciate that, guys. But like I said, I am a sales rep for Window Cleaning Resource. And if you want to order your supplies through me, you become one of the elite, one of the nation, one of the cool kids. Always order your supplies through me. That's what I'm here for. I want to be your rep. Have a personal rep. Have a guy. I got a guy. I want to be that guy. But my number directs 862 312 2026. That is my cell. So. Just put everything in your cart. Text me and be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. Put it in. It's awesome and epic, and you guys are stinking awesome for doing that. Really, really awesome. Plus, then you can tell me what kind of name brand things that I get to buy. That's another funny thing that started. If you buy your supplies from me, I get to get name brand spaghetti pasta or something, and uh, you guys are pretty dang clever. But anyway... So that's all out of the way. I just want to give a couple shout outs. Again, some love to the YouTube side of things. If you're making comments, I can't say shout outs to every one of you, but I pick them every single week. Just say what's up to Clean Streak Window Cleaning. Sam Burkett, Cassie, like I, Casey, Cassie, I'm sorry, either way. Uh, Zitarosa, you are there all the time. I should give you shout outs more often. Uh, Ryan Fuster for his thumbs up. He thumbs up everything. Like if he's on videos, other videos, I just see his name, it's just a thumb. So cool. Carlos Sal Saldua, what's up, man? Keep rock and rolling on that route. Um, Ethan's Roof and Exterior Cleaning, Exterior Washing, sorry. And Brandon Evans for the idea of the show and if you have ideas man i'm out of them <laughs> i need help sometimes uh we do re kind of go through uh, old episodes pick new topics kind of go from there but if you have an idea of something comment on youtube and i would love to use it but this week we're talking about naming your company what's in a name why name it there's like a whole lot of stuff in a name that you may not be thinking about. So that's what we're going to talk about. Thanks to Brandon for that um, idea. So naming your company. Almost all of us who are watching this or listening to this uh, have a name. Or even if you haven't even started yet, which is awesome. You're learning so much information by all this nerding out you're doing on podcasts and videos. You're going to be that much farther kind of in the game. Maybe you already have an idea for a name. And I'm going to kind of go across some of my pet peeves in names. And I don't know. You don't have to agree. You know, we're just chatting. We're talking. But maybe you'll get something out of it. Um, maybe you'll rename your company. But that's not necessarily what this is all for either. Rebranding is a huge thing that I do think needs to be done regularly. Rebranding. Like... WCR's rebranded. I've rebranded my company, which sucks, by the way. There's a lot to it that you're not even thinking about. But all of a sudden, it's fresh. It's like shedding. You know, it's like it's like shedding, um, molting almost. And you're this new thing, and it's pretty awesome. The other thing is to stay fresh. We've all been in the Hardee's or Wendy's or whatever, some restaurant that hasn't changed. Taco Bell's with still the 90s, like purple and light blue, you know? And triangles. Triangles are big in the 90s. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, if you don't rebrand, you just never stay fresh. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to change 
absolutely everything from, from you, but I'm going to give you a quick story, and he's probably watching, so I'm not going to go too much into detail, but a good uh, friend of mine rebranded his company and renamed his company to have the name of the city in a little town in his name, and he's like tripled his business. Now, I'm not saying go do that because it's going to triple your business, but there is so much to a name that you don't even think about. And here's the thing. I'm going to go over my pet peeves. And first and foremost, I just want to say, this is not geared towards anybody. This is not, um, I do not have you in my mind. I have nobody in my mind as far as who I'm talking about. So if any of this stuff is you, please don't write angry emails. You can if you want, but there's no need. You don't have to. Um, but these are kind of some thoughts on, on names. People get super, super um, tight on their names because of this. You know, they're very, you know, they either really like their name or they hate their name. And now they're like stuck and it's this whole thing. Um, but why would you name your, your company a certain thing? And here's the mindset kind of in a business. Now, we're not talking about the McDonald's, which was a last name or the all these names where I know. Like Hardy's is actually, I want to say his last name is Hardy too. But there's a lot of times where you can use your name and that's cool. Those companies have built something big, but the name didn't change the culture, right? The name itself kind of laid the groundwork for how this was all going to play out. Now, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your service company, right? We are on a different spectrum because we are a luxury um, we are small businesses for the most part, because mind you, even if you have a big business, the technically big business is like employs more than 10,000 people. I don't, there's some kind of category, so we're all small businesses, right? Um, and it's a little bit different in what we do than what other industries do. Um, but naming a company is important for a few different things. Now, the big thing that I always say with naming, and I've gone through, I've named two companies. Um, I named my first one just initials, and it was more for differentiating that company from the others that were around. But there's a lot of guys out there who have names that kind of exist. And that's cool. There's a lot of clever stuff out there. Uh, clear views and uh, what a pain and... Um, pain in the glass and um, that kind of thing. There's a lot of those. Um, so if you're going to differentiate yourself, the big thing to do is to see what's around you. Because if there is a Clearview spelled the exact same way in Tacoma, Washington, but you're in Charlotte, North Carolina, it doesn't really matter, right? Those aren't going to be. But you want to look at a radius and you want to look at like an hour's radius. I've had... Um, companies call, and not us, but uh, a forum or a group that was uh, that I had moderated on, who had been called from other states because they just like Googled it and they, they ranked so stinking well that people from other states would call because they wouldn't look at it. So I get that, but that's super rare. That's not necessarily what we're talking about. But I'm going to tell you a company that I started in North Carolina. Now, you guys know that I've done sales. I've switched over to that, and that's my full-time gig for that. Too many hats, kind of. I still have a company back in Wisconsin, and it's in bio, blah, blah, blah. So I'm hands-off, and I just do sales. That's why you should order through me. But um, the company I named here was Southwash. Now, the reason that I kind of got onto that name is there's a few different factors to really look into names. Now, that's not the greatest name ever, I know, and I'm not telling you it's better than yours by any means. But my idea process was this. Now, I've never found another Southwash um, anywhere, on any rings, on any websites or systems or anything. There wasn't, at the time when I named it, anything anywhere in the country that was ranking for that. So... It was really pretty nice to kind of have that original one. But as names go, Southwash sounds like mouthwash, right? But mouthwash is a word that we all know. So instead of calling it like Entenies Industries or something where it's like you have to think of the name, it flows. Southwash just flows. So people could remember that 
a heck of a lot easier without even trying because they already associated with a different word. Southwash itself told you somewhat what I did. We wash. Now, what do I wash? It doesn't know. But we're in south, in the south, and that's kind of where that kind of came from. And we wash. And the logo paired up with Southwash. And it was a Web 2.0 kind of logo that was a, you know, house if it was kind of broken in with showing very, very clip art, like, not clip art, Web 2.0, but, but explaining kind of what it is. It worked very well together. Uh, it's probably my favorite name, like the image that everything put together with the business, like everything was crystal clear for what we did. Now, when you're naming a company like that, you have to understand why it's named a certain way to get something. Now, I know other people who uh, have named their companies, Wash Things, Smart Wash uh, was one of them, worked very hard on kind of that logo. And it's the same thing, it has Wash in the name, but it doesn't necessarily have to say because my company's name was uh, Southwash Exterior Cleaning Services. That pretty much covers it, kind of lets you know. So you get a little tagline to kind of explain what services you are you do. But if you're just, um, you know, an initials, you know, XYZ, window cleaning, well, they have to remember XYZ. And there's a big kind of XYZ is the last, so that would be easy, but just giving it up there. But if you have initials like that, it's very hard to remember that name unless uh, you're not surrounded by any other initials. So in my first company that I named, everybody around me, everybody, I'm telling there was a John's window cleaning, a Chuck's window cleaning, uh, Al's window cleaning, like everybody's was a name. And you get lost, like Chuck, Al's, Steve's, Tim's, Bob's, like you don't remember, like who do we use, Bob's or Tim's? I don't don't remember a guy's name was Tim, but he worked for Bob's. You can't always remember if everybody's named that way. So you have to differentiate yourself. And the only reason is is this is not for your ads. It's not for your um, marketing material because you can do amazing stuff and have yourself stand out. But this is for remembering who they called when they see a list. If they may use you the first time and you go, man, I'm so good, they're going to remember you. No, they're not. They're not. They're not going to remember you right away. If you go back and watch all of our, you know, keeping them episode where it shows you how to keep them, maybe it'll be a little bit better. But they're not going to actually remember you because they don't care until they need to care. Our brains do that. They forget things that we can forget until we need them, right? So what you're trying to differentiate yourself is when they go on Google and they search window cleaning or pressure washing or whatever, right? It's going to list all the places there. Now rank well. That's how people search nowadays. You have to rank well no matter what you do. But when you rank, they're going to look at all of them and they're going to say, which one was familiar to me? Which one was... And in their brain, they're reading each one. Tim's window cleaning, Bob's window cleaning, John's window cleaning, Southwash. That was it. Like, even if they don't remember it, they could be triggered to remember it. And that's what you're going for. Now, if you are Clearview, spelled clear vu and there's another guy 20 30 minutes away it's called clear view v-i-e-w you will never be differentiated from them when somebody's looking at both of you together very hard unless somebody makes a note like view you spelled view wrong or something you know but it's very very hard because people just associate it and a lot of homeowners are going to have your services every six months to a year. Those are the most common times, as much as we like those quarterly and monthly cleanings. Um, You have to differentiate yourself because I can't remember somebody I used this year. Like We had a refrigerator repair company come, and I've called them twice, two different places, one for appliance repair, one for our fridge, our old fridge, and uh, one for our new. I've called them twice within a six month period, you know, whatever, still could not remember them. I mean, we had to pull, like, try to find their old records and invoices so we could pull these. I mean, this is how our brains work. You have to be different. You have to differentiate yourself just name wise because that's the first thing that people get. And now, this is not initial ones. Initial cleanings is awesome because people will associate a name with something else. And I'll give you another kind of general idea there is a sales group out there. And um, this guy was trying to do a product launch. Now, this sales group is just for everything, and this just happened to be one of them. 
I'm not really into product launches. Of course, we do it ourselves, but I don't have my hands in it, so I don't have to worry about it. But this guy has this product, and the logo itself was completely, it was an, it was a, an ice cube with a flame inside of it. And the logo, the lettering on it was like Comic Sans. And uh, I think it was called the Hot Bag or... It was, it was the whole thing together completely did not show what it was. This bag was supposed to be fire and waterproof for documents. It was supposed to be very, very like, you know, high end, supposed to protect your super important documents. It was a huge major bag. And he did the logo in Comic Sans and some fruity name of like, you know, where it was like, it was like uh, uh, the bubble bag or like it was some, it didn't even have anything to do with um, that. It actually looked like a grocery thing, like a, 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 a like a, a, um, a fruit bag. You know what I'm saying? Like a, a, when you have, when you go to the produce section, they have those cold bags and then they have like ones that keep your produce fresh. That's what it was. It was like a produce bag. And it was supposed to be this, and it, he totally missed, totally missed on it and the big thing that he didn't quite understand is how much that conveyed you look at that you look at the name it doesn't register what it is it doesn't tell me anything about the product in one thing if you would have said like you know um the uh slate protector bag or you know um uh docu vault or something like that it would have told me what it was that was the name right and he failed in the beginning he couldn't sell any of them nobody wanted them it was a big flop i feel bad because obviously you know people take gambles gambles don't always pay off but a huge portion of it was to that same thing with your business if you think that your name is not what you want it to be change it change it and it is a huge process i get it and people, yes, do associate you and do know your name as Clearview now. But as you change it, everybody new will only know your new name. And you're working on those old people who say, hey, uh, our new name is fill in the blank, but our old name was Clearview. Whatever you want. It doesn't matter if you do change it, but this really does help. It really can help. This is why people spend so much time on names. Is you want something that tells people what it is at a glance, but yet doesn't get lost in the mix. And you can't have a name like, you know, super, super long. You'd have to have like a, a small name with a tagline and that kind of all goes together, but the logo just has to work. The logo work, that's for its own thing. Pay somebody to do your logo for, for Pete's sake. Even if you're just rebranding just logo, pay someone to do your logo. People will go and spend, you know, $2,000 on a wrap for the vehicle and they'll put a clip art logo on it. They won't spend $500 to get somebody to make a bunch of logos so they can pick. Whatever. I digress. Have somebody build your logo. Um, but that's kind of the importance of a name. Now, if you convey the wrong thing in a name, that can also be problematic. I have a friend who uh, has been cleaning windows forever. Zero advertising. He's completely as booked as he possibly can in a very high-end area. Um, but his name on the company is Windows Only. Guess what he does? Window cleaning, pressure washing, screen repair, roof cleaning. The problem is, when he started the company, he only did Windows. And Windows Only is a clever name. Like, you know, if you called it Only Clean Windows or something, that conveys everything you need to know, that they clean windows. That's what they do. That's their focus. Right? If I know that somebody is only does one thing, they're a pro at that one thing. If they do 10 things, they might be good at it, right? That's what that conveys to me. And it's very clear what it is. Right? The problem is when you're so limited, you tend to isolate yourself and then you can't convey. Who goes through the phone book? Not the phone book, <laughs> Google, whatever and sees windows only and goes, man, I'm gonna hire them for pressure washing, unless they know. So it's tough, it really kind of holds you in. That's why you have to focus on it. Um, and again, he's been in it forever, he's got it, it's staying that way, uh, but that's just one of those things to think about. Now and for the future, let's it be open. Now, back to the name Southwash. I wash houses, I wash windows, I wash your roof, I wash your concrete. 
It covers all of the things that I do. I don't paint. It's not in the name, right? So something to think about is to allow you to kind of have that. Exterior cleaning services, again, something that broad tells you exactly what you do without limiting it. Exterior cleaning services, I could clean the exterior of anything. Anything on the outside, we do kind of thing. So you have that option. That's something to really think about when you're doing naming. We talked about comparing to others, but the other thing is is falling kind of in its own thing. Like, what do you want to be known as? Do you want to be known as the company who does, it's just one guy and cleans? Like, hey, I'm Jersey, Jersey's window cleaning. If you want that, that's awesome. If nobody around you has just a name and that's the image you want to go, fine. But there's other ways to do it. You could be, you know, uh, Jersey's family-owned window cleaning company or something where it's focused now. You're really pushing that as like, hey, it's me and my wife. We do this. We're a small company. You know, if that's what you want to do, that's awesome. But Al's window cleaning sounds like, yeah, who's going to show up at my house? Al. No. Al's window cleaning has been sold multiple times. They have tons of employees do business. One of the largest window cleaning companies or were one of the largest window cleaning companies uh, in Wisconsin. They have, I mean, just 100 employees, you know. Um, It sounds like a small company and then they show up and it's just tax. So you've pulled yourself across, but the name has already been made. So it's very hard to, you almost have to predict where you want to go. And that's why when you start a company or wherever you are right now, You have that list like we've talked about that shows what you want to do and where you want to go. Do you want to have 50 employees or do you want to work for yourself forever? Yes, that may change, but that is going to give you the guidelines for things. If you work just by yourself right now, but you want 50 employees, maybe the name Al's Window Cleaning is not the best suited for you because you are going to be bigger. Maybe you need to have a little bit more of a corporate feel. Now, the initial company that I had in Wisconsin was that exact same thing. Everything was a single name, single name, single name. We wanted to be a corporation. If I brought Southwash there, Southwash, like that is a corporate name and you can differentiate and have pictures of you and your family or whatever, but I want people to know that this is a company. There's a lot of people I never, ever, 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 ever met, right? People, I have people who clean. My operations officer does it. They take care of that. I don't meet people. I talk to them on the phone and then that, they don't ever see me. So I want that kind of feel. You need to make sure that your name conveys that because it does. It's going to change the trajectory and kind of where you go in the past. So that's part of, of why you want to differentiate from the competition. But try to be different. If you can, and, and this is not one thing, pull out the name out of your butt and wait, but... If you can be completely different and you have no competitors and nobody with that name, you can actually find um, a URL that is specific. Like if your name is XYZ Cleaning and you have the website, visit us at XYZCleaning.com. That is like right there tells people that you're legit. Like if, if you have a web URL because everybody's got the same and you're, you know, again, I'm sorry if your name's Clearview. I just, it's in my brain. Um, but if you're Clearview and whatever, you know, to get a URL, oh, just visit us at Clearview to Tacoma, Washington.com. Like that's long. Like that conveys something different so if you're thinking of a name look at that i had a church a while ago uh, that i had gone to and the church itself picked their name as they were going through they only listed all the names that they were going through and to picking this name and blah 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 they searched every one of them in the url and if any one of those urls was already taken that wasn't their name that's how important that is think about how many people find you through your website if you don't have a website you're missing so much but you know i would say other than referrals because referrals will still get you like 40 50 percent of all of your incoming but other than that 75 plus percent comes from your website that's the truth and if it's hard to find we're talking about you know seo uh all that stuff 
if they can't find it or it's not easy to remember, like ours was. By the way, we're at windowcleaner.com now. Super easy to remember where it used to be window cleaning resource. People can't spell resource for some reason. Like in my brain, I'm spelling with like a C. Like it's a whole thing. It was harder to kind of find that way than windowcleaner.com, right? So changing kind of the names, URLs, focused on that. Maybe somebody has the URL you need, but they're not using it. Spend some money, get it. It's so worth that. It's worth that. But try to be different. Try to be different. And remember, with the name, in general, anything that you do with your name is going to be part of your logo. So have something that is clear as what you do, what you do but it's not too restrictive. And imagine it with the logo. So every single time your logo appears, your name's there. Logo and name, logo name. The two have to kind of match. Now, when you look at some like tech companies or, you know, fashion companies, their logo never, it's just a logo because eventually that will be understood by everybody. McDonald's logo, you could put that on anything in the entire country and people would instantly know, right? The Nike logo, we all know that. But you will never be that way because we're a small business. It's just not like that. But logo recognition is huge when it comes to people recognizing your name. So logo name, logo name, logo name. Throw it on everything. But it has to be together. It has to make sense when you see it. And I can't tell you what the best one is out there. But I can tell you to be different. To make sure that everything tells people what you do and is not restrictive. And looks great with your logo. And that's your brand, man. That's your brand and love your brand. Even if you have a brand now and you're like, I'm not gonna re I'm not gonna redo it. I'm not really happy with my name, but I'm not gonna redo it. Redo just your logo if you want. Freshen it up, but put it everywhere and love your brand. The more you love it, the more you put it on your shirts, your hats, your coats if you're wearing them. I've seen people have stickers on their buckets on a belt, they have it all over their truck. We put our logo, which I loved our logo uh, at our other company in Wisconsin, on everything. We even had it like half on the backs of these trucks. So you couldn't even see the whole logo. You could just see part of it. But it was like boom, boom. It was everywhere. It just makes that really fit. When you go to a, a hotel and you walk into the hotel, there's a pencil with the logo on it and a pad of paper next to a flyer and it's everything is boom, 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 plastered, color themed, everything. That's what you want to do because it brings the whole thing together. But that's your name. That's, that's names in general, man. Change it, don't change it. Tell me what your name is. If you're listening right now or you're watching on YouTube, comment. Tell me your name. I want to know. I want to know. And just clear view, I put it out there, man, like I said, sorry, if yours is clear view, it's probably pretty awesome. Like you picked the name because it's awesome. I just threw it out there. So put it out, let me know, comment, and most importantly, order your supplies through me because that's how I make my cheddar, man. And if you do order your supplies through me, um, I'm going to give you a code right now for 5% off if you order through me. You can't go on the website and do this. You got to order through me. But the code is... Uh, name envy, name envy. That's the code. Five percent off. Call me, text me, which most people do. Say, hey, shop all night. Put it in your cart. Text me. Be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Put my order in. Name envy. You get five percent off. I put it in. It costs you nothing extra, and I get uh, my cut on that. And that's how I afford this fancy, fancy, fancy wood. If you're watching, it's a backdrop, it's a panel. All these stickers, man. By the way, if you have stickers too, send them in. That's awesome too. The huge convention's coming up. If you haven't bought your tickets, call me 862-312-2026. I'll get those uh, tickets ordered for you. Or go to thehugeconvention.com. We're going to start talking about it a ton. So stay tuned and listen to that. Change your name or don't change your name. But either way, be happy with it. And until next week, go out there and be epic.